This is the best block in NBA history, right? Wrong. We just saw a block that was far more impressive with even more athleticism on display. Okay, I'm sorry. Another clickbait title, trying to get more viewers, trying to build this channel back up because obviously a Game 7 NBA Finals block in crunch time is more impressive. However, Anthony Edwards, not just that block, but the entire fourth quarter down the stretch last night for this Timberwolves team was unbelievable and I had to break it down for you guys in a quick video today. Now just for context, earlier in the day it was announced that his co-star Carl Anthony Towns was out with a meniscus injury, meaning he could be missing the rest of the season. A lot of people were saying, oh, the Timberwolves have done so well so far, this is such a shame. And the question was, can Anthony Edwards carry this team until Carl Anthony Towns is potentially back because he's gonna be reevaluated in a month. We're about to break down the film, so check this out. But before that, you've got to note that early in the game, Anthony Edwards went back to the locker room, not once, but twice, with injuries of his own. And he still came back out to battle it out with a true dog mentality. He returned to score 16 of his 44 points in the fourth quarter to lead his Timberwolves squad to a win on the road, which is crucial with just under a month of the season left to play. The number one seed in the West is up for grabs with Minnesota, OKC, and now Denver making a push at it. Now enough talking, let's dive into the film and I'm gonna break down how he took over down the stretch. Okay, so this is crunch time. It's a one point game. The Timberwolves are down with two and a half minutes left to play. And just check out the footwork from Anthony Edwards right here. Okay, catches the ball on the wing. Now, Pascal Siakam is shading. He doesn't go with the cut in Kyle Anderson, okay? He's shading to try and contain Anthony Edwards because you see the sideline and the baseline. If you can trap him in this area, that adds another level of defense. It acts as an extra defender. But Anthony Edwards gets his way to the baseline and then look at the footwork, right? He steps with his left. His left foot right now is under the basket. Okay, Pascal Siakam is anticipating him to go up right there. And then he hits them with the Euro, completely evading Pascal Siakam. Look, he's completely out of the picture now because he's gone with the Euro step all the way over here. And then he finishes on the reverse side of the bucket with an outstretched arm to negate Miles Turner's shot blocking presence so that he can finish off the glass and get that one to go. That is an insanely difficult move to pull off, especially in crunch time. Here we go, with one minute 15 left, it's a tied game. They're running some screen roll with Anthony Edwards. Now the Pacers, they've got Miles Turner guarding Gobert. But as you can see here, when Gobert's going to set that screen, Anthony Edwards can see Miles Turner is kind of trying to jump out at him and they're trying to trap him along this sideline again so that you'd have the defender here on the ball and you'd have this man here so they'd be able to trap him. So Anthony Edwards is patient, he takes his time, he gives a little, has he a little, a little fake going back that way, okay? So now he's created a little bit of separation. So now, Miles Turner's body is going this way with Gobert who's faking going this way. Nemhard now has to recover to Anthony Edwards and Anthony Edwards does a great job here. He looks like he's gonna drive to his left. So the defender's momentum is going that way as well. He gets one dribble out, plants his foot, and the cross. Now look at the separation he's created, okay? Now he's got his space. Gobert is still here with the screen, and the defender has dropped back as well. So Anthony Edwards knows at this point that he's gonna be able to get a good look off. He uses the screen, gets to his dribble pull up from the top of the arc, and he cashes it in. All right, now, under a minute to go. You're up three. You need a good score on this possession right here. You're being defended by Neesmith, who has gone under the radar, I think, amongst casual fans as a very good defender this season. Now, he's just calling out a couple plays here. You can see him with his hand gestures. Look at Anthony Edwards right here. He's calling out, getting Nemar confused, and you see this little fist that he makes here as if he's calling for a screen. Now, he's calling for that screen as if Rudy Gobert is going to come up and set it. So in Neesmith's mind, he's got to fight over this screen without turning his head. Gobert doesn't come for the screen and that allows Anthony Edwards to keep driving. Now all of Neesmith's momentum is headed this way and this is what really stands out like in the last play. Anthony Edwards' ability to stop on a dime, to plant that front foot and just stop or change directions. He does that with a little push off, they say he's Michael Jordan's son, so it's only right. And he gets the defender absolutely cooked right here. And you guessed it, 
That is more than enough separation for Anthony Edwards to stop on a dime, pull up, and cash that one in. Just look at this right here, okay? That front foot's planted, defender goes flying, jumps on two feet, catches off the bounce to knock that one down. Now here we go. It's a two-point game, 27 seconds. You've got to get a good score here. And like I said, Anthony Edwards' athleticism that allows him to change directions is elite because right here, he's going for a V-cut, he's cutting in there, and then he's going to ping back out. So he cuts, gets Siakam. Look at Siakam's body position here. He's absolutely out of the play right now. So Anthony Edwards gets the ball. Now Siakam's trying to recover by going this way to him. And Anthony Edwards, to be fair to Siakam, he does a good job recovering, but it's too late because now he's in an upright position. Anthony Edwards has gone past him. There's a help defender here. Nemhard, but he's much smaller than Anthony Edwards. So what Anthony Edwards does that's really fascinating here, he goes off one foot, okay? Because most players here, you're thinking they're gonna gather the ball, they're gonna take one step here, then their right foot's gonna come, take another step here, and they're gonna try and finish at the lane. Instead, to not even give the defenders a chance to contest the shot properly, look, Pascal Siakam doesn't even have enough time to get off the floor because Anthony Edwards has gone up on the first step with his left foot, and he shoots the floater over the top and knocks that one in. Now here you're up two with seven seconds. You want to knock down this free throw to make it a three-point game to make it even harder for the Indiana Pacers because uh, they could easily go to overtime here. Anthony Edwards misses the shot. Now you're thinking, how are you going to be the face of the league? How are you going to be a superstar? You're missing free throws in the clutch. But guess what? It's all right. He's going to make up for his mistake because right here, Neesmith's driving. Anthony Edwards says, not today. And I'm going to pause it right there. Look at how high he is. His hand is at the top of the square. His head is at the rim. And he eliminates the shot. Just look at this athleticism, right? Left-handed block. His head hits the rim. He lands. Look at how he landed. That's insane. He could have broke his wrist. And he seals the win. This is what superstars do. This, if you're a superstar in the NBA, is what you do on both ends of the floor. We always talk about superstars. You've got to be able to play defense if you want to be a true superstar in the NBA. And that's why I think Anthony Edwards is that guy. Now, elsewhere in the league last night, the Boston Celtics were in Denver for a matchup against the reigning champions. And it just showed why, in my opinion, the Celtics aren't ready to win it all. Denver only made four threes the entire game. They shot 19 for seven three and they still managed to win. And this is coming just after a game against the Cavaliers where the Celtics melted down in the fourth quarter, threw away a huge lead, and Dean Wade, not D Wade, not Dwayne Wade, Dean Wade, this guy, outscored the entire Celtics team in the fourth quarter. So if you want to see a video about why the Celtics struggle in the fourth quarter of the games, let me know in the comments. As always, make sure you subscribe, and until next time, get buckets.